Hey everybody, Professor Davis here, ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And I'm coming to you today from my teaching labs at Georgetown University. Well, we're gonna to try to learn a little bit about polarimetry with the help of my assistant, Dave, and uh, a big bag of sugar and a fish tank. Well, let me show you what I mean by that. And what I've got here is a little setup with a fish tank, and all that's in there right now is just regular, ordinary, run-of-the-mill tap water. And uh, as you can see, my assistant Dave is taking a position behind the tank. Now, I can see Dave just fine right now, because I'm looking through a couple of polarizing filters that were very kindly lent to me by Alicia Ray at the teaching company. And uh, there's Dave. Now, if I turn one of these polarizing filters 90 degrees, notice that Dave disappears. Isn't that interesting? And the reason Dave is disappearing is that each of these polarizers uh, causes the light that gets through them to have a plane polarization. That is to say that it's oscillating in just one plane rather than all planes. So if I misalign my two polarizers, I can't see anything because no light gets through. It's only when the second polarizer is aligned with the plane of polarization of the light that's reflecting off of Dave that he becomes visible to me. So how is Dave going to pull his little disappearing act? Well, I'm going to use something that's readily available to us all. Sugar, purchased at my local grocery store. Now the sugar that you buy at your local grocery store is a compound called sucrose. It's a disaccharide and it is chiral, meaning the molecules in this sugar are handed. They have handedness. And every last molecule of sucrose in this bag of sugar is of one particular handedness. Now because of that, this particular compound is capable of rotating plane polarized light, changing the plane of polarization by a known amount. And based on my calculations, if I add this 10 pound bag of sugar to my 16 liters of water, I should get just about a 90 degree rotation of the plane polarized light that's getting through the first polarizer in my setup. Once I've done that, I'm gonna use my second polarizer to try to visualize that by rotating it to recover my image of Dave coming all the way through the tank. Let's see if we can do it. Once again, notice that we can see the image of Dave through the tank as long as both polarizers are aligned with one another. Next, I'm going to take my bag of sugar and add it to my aquarium and be sure that it's thoroughly dissolved. I've done some calculations previously that lead me to believe that if I get all of my sugar dissolved in all of this water, I should have a solution of sufficient concentration to rotate the plane polarized light by exactly 90 degrees. We'll go over the math in just a little bit once we see the effect of dissolving all of this sugar on the rotation of plane polarized light. why we test the demonstrations ahead of time. Uh, even with two spin bars going at top speed, it looks like it's gonna to take too long for all the sugar to dissolve. So I have availed myself of a stick, and I'm gonna use that to, uh, to manually agitate a little bit and see if I can speed up the process of dissolution so that we can get all of that sugar to dissolve in the amount of time I have to do my demo. The sucrose molecules in this solution should now rotate the plane polarized light that comes from Dave in our first polarizer by about 90 degrees as it moves through the tank, meaning I won't be able to see Dave until I have adjusted my second polarizer by that 90 degree angle, and that's going to tell me whether or not my calculations were correct. So moment of truth, let's find out. <laughs> Let's 
So let's recap what just happened. We essentially built a very simple polarimeter. In our polarimeter, we had a light source, which was the reflected light from my assistant, Dave. We had a polarizer, and that polarizer made sure that all the light that made it from Dave to our eyes was plain polarized, oscillating in just one orientation. Now, when we had an achiral material inside of this tank, water, we observed that a second polarizer had to be aligned parallel with the initial polarizer in order for that light to get through and to our eyes. But when we placed a chiral solution in here by adding sucrose to the mixture, we discovered that that plane of polarization actually changes as the light traverses the tank. And therefore, we had to rotate our second polarizer by a certain amount in order to see our image, to see the light that was originating from our source. Now, using that angle of rotation, the concentration of the sucrose in solution here and the path length of the tank that it had to traverse, we can calculate something called the specific rotation of sucrose. And this very useful value allows us to then determine enantiomeric excesses and sometimes even identify chiral compounds using the technique of polarimetry. That's all for now, everybody. Thanks for watching my practice demonstration. I uh, hope to see you on my next one. I'm Professor Davis from chemsurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. See you next time.